Thanks for joining me today on this episode of Taking It From The Top, where we'll be going through an overview over reed care and maintenance. While there's certainly a plethora of resources surrounding this topic, I'd like to share a couple of tips and tricks which have helped inform my philosophy of being a reed minimalist and tone maximalist. One of the main motivations for creating a reed care and maintenance regimen is that we want to get the most mileage out of all the reeds that we buy for all of our instruments. While not all of my reeds are necessarily going to make it onto the performance hall stage, I tell all of my students that there is room for every reed in our rotation. Many of them will serve different purposes over the course of their lifetime. While none of us are necessarily looking to add a carpentry minor to our saxophone education, learning a few basic adjustments will help take us a long way in making these reeds work for us. There are many ways to do this. And if there's only one thing that you take away from any reed resource, the best things that you can do for your reeds are to break them in methodically and to store them effectively. When it comes to the equipment that I use to take care of and store my reeds, my first recommendation is using Daddario's reed case. This particular one is a reed case that I've been using since my senior year of high school, and I store all of my reeds with the 72% humidity control pack. This version of the pack is the one I think is most helpful across a variety of weather situations. You can get these humidifier packs both from Didario and from Boveda. They both serve the same purpose and they both fit in the reed case very readily. When it comes to reed adjustment, few things beat the versatility of the reed geek. And because they come in a variety of models and my favorite color is black, here we are. On a more serious note, this particular model is known for being able to adjust synthetic reeds without tearing the material, which is why I love the black diamond model so much. When I'm in the final stages of adjusting my reeds, I use the Vandoran reed resurfacer and reed stick to get that final level of detailing, blending, and polish on all of my reeds. For those of us looking for bonus credit, storing our reeds in a closed environment helps stabilize our reeds and prolongs their lifetime of playability. Some devices that can help us out include humidity gauges and storing our reeds in a sealable plastic bag or airtight plastic container. Finally, if we have a reed that we feel is approaching the end of its lifetime or if we've got a little too excited practicing our slap tongue, Vandoran's reed clipper can be the solution to help us revitalize and prolong the life of these reeds. As I'd mentioned previously, the process in which we use to break in our reeds is probably one of the most important things that we can do to stabilize our reeds and to prolong their lifetime of usability. While each player is going to have a different method of introducing moisture and playtime on each reed, the idea is that we want to limit both of these elements at the very beginning of a reed's life, even if we fall in love with it right away. By breaking in a reed slowly, we learn about its individual characteristics and then we can organize all of our reeds in a way so that they suit our day-to-day -day needs. Not all of our reeds are going to make it onto our Carnegie Hall debut, but many of our reeds are going to serve us very well as practice and teaching reeds. When it comes to breaking in new reeds, I'm pretty restrictive of the amount of moisture and the amount of playtime I introduce to brand new reeds. For example, if I open this brand new reed today, I traditionally soak these reeds in my mouth just like I would if I was getting ready to play, making sure I cover all sides. Once that fun process is done, I put the reed back in the case where I can store it properly, and that's probably what I'll do for the first two or three days of that reed's life. After this initial period of introducing my reeds to moisture, the only playing that I'll do within the first week of that reed's lifetime is maybe a couple of seconds at a time playing long tones or overtones on the neck assembly. This gives me a chance to feel out the reed's potential for response and flexibility across registers. In the second week of that reed's life, I'll start incorporating these reeds into my warm-up routine, um, and by the end of that second week, I'll have a good idea if this reed is going to live in the performance rotation or my teaching and practicing rotation of reeds. I generally won't adjust any of my reeds until they reach this two week mark and all of those adjustments are done with my reed geek. When I feel like it's time to flatten the backside of the reed, I put it against the flat edge of the reed geek holding it in front of a bright light source. If you see light coming through, it's indicative that the reed has warped, so flatten the backside of the reed, being careful to avoid working too much around the tip. Make sure to get the bottom of the backside as well. I'd like to blend my work together using the Vandoren Reed Resurfacer, moving the reed in small circles in a 4-3-2-1 fashion.
90% of the time, flattening the backside of the reed is the only adjustment I'll make on most of my reeds. But having the reed sit flush against the mouthpiece facing, I'm able to get a true indication of what the reed is able to provide me in a playing setting. If I want to squeeze out that last 10% out of a reed that I'm really picky about, I might choose to balance it. And all that means is I'm trying to get that reed to vibrate as evenly as possible on both sides. One way I can test this is by playing with a crooked embouchure on the mouthpiece to expose only one half of the reed to vibrate. Through this test, I'm able to identify if one half of the reed is a little bit more resistant and on that side, I might choose to remove a little bit of material to balance it out so that the whole reed is vibrating evenly. Working on the front side of the reed is much more tricky, so proceed slowly. You can always come back and shave off more material. I would recommend using Reed Geek's tutorials to see how you can shape your sound. Avoid doing too much work around the heart or the tip of the reed. Again, I'm using Van Doren's reed stick to blend my work together. Another way that we can maximize usage out of all of the reeds in our rotation is by organizing them in a way that prioritizes the longevity of our favorite performance reeds while rotating through the ones that didn't quite make the cut to make sure that they have something to offer us during a bulk of our practice. For example, in this reed case are my favorite performance reeds. These are the reeds that over the course of the break-in process consistently proved that they could respond quickly and could span a wide tonal palette without having me work very hard. In general, these reeds don't need very much adjusting, if at all, and I'll only check in on them every few days to make sure that they're still in the playing condition I need them to be in. On the other hand, my teaching and practice reeds are the ones that I'll do a bulk of my work on during my playing day. Some of these reeds are quite good, and with a little bit of adjusting, they might end up in the performance rotation, but for the most part, my daily work on these reeds will give me a greater appreciation for these great reeds when I come to performance day. In terms of finding uses for the most troublesome reeds in my rotation, I'll tend to begin my practice session warming up on these reeds because they force me to play with good habits right from the beginning of that practice session. Also, these are the reeds that I'm going to be practicing my adjustment skills on just so I can hone in on my own preferences when it comes to making sure my good reeds function even better. At the end of the day, these kinds of lessons teach me what I can expect from good equipment, but also what I need to be bringing to the table as an artist and performer. If you wanted to do a deeper dive on any of these reed topics, I would recommend that you check out Dr. Stephen Page's videos on breaking in reeds, reed adjustment, and reed storage. All of his videos are produced extremely well and the content is super relevant. Way to go, Dr. Page. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Taking It From The Top. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this content with anybody that you think would find it helpful. And tune in next week where I'm joined by Abby Shepard as we talk about mental health for performing musicians.